hands. Um, for the two kilogram box, we have the weight. So that's two times 9.81, 19.62. Uh, and now we go around the boundary looking for contact. There's the force applied by the cable. What direction does that point? It points out of the body, um, parallel to the cable, so this way for the two. Uh, I'll call that T. And the only other place there's contact is at the boundary between the two boxes. Um, is there any reason for us to, so like in statics, a lot of times when there was friction contact, we didn't even bother to break it up into a normal and a, um, and a friction component. Is there any reason to do it here or should we just write it as an unknown force vector? Like when, when does it ever benefit you to break it up into a normal and a friction component? That's right. If you know the coefficient of friction, then it helps you to do that. If you don't, if you're not given a coefficient of friction, then you might as well just leave it as a vector. Um, so we have a uh, force up. Um, so that's a, I'll call that the normal force. Um, I don't know, N1. And then which way is the friction force going? We know it's either going to the right or the left. Um, the five is moving to the right. The two is moving to the left, which means the friction is pointed to the right. And that's 0.2 times N1. And there's no other contact. What? In oh, in the old one. Did I have the direction going the same direction? I mean, of the motion and everything. Was the black going the other way? Yeah, because if, as long as that cable's inextensible. You know, the... Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, well, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, I guess um, if you make the assumption that this, that this system is... Uh, that that cable is doing something. I mean, it depends on which one, uh, how you started that motion, I guess. If that motion was happening because, so what the velocities of these are at the instant that this is happening doesn't have anything to do with these forces, right? Those all affect like the velocities at later instants. This has to do with what forces were applied a second ago or a millisecond ago or whatever. And so if you make this motion happen by pulling the two kilogram box this way, then, then this would be going that way and this would be going that way. If that motion happened because you pushed on this one, then yeah, that, that cable just folds up and doesn't do anything. I mean, I, I suppose that is kind of confusing. That is kind of the, um, yeah, going the other way would be because the box is going left. Right. But then again, it, I mean, it all depends on how you got that motion going. Because if the box was going to the left, well, you could have. Oh, yeah, you're right. Then it makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean. So partly, don't, don't get confused about this. So 
in that, like that 50 Newton force can make it move to the left. But don't think about that as a requirement. That 50 Newton force and the velocities of those two boxes are completely independent of each other, you know? Um, the forces that are happening at this instant don't have to correspond to the velocities at that instant, okay? They only have to correspond to the acceleration at that instant. And to get velocities, you know, acceleration doesn't tell you velocity. Integrating an acceleration over time gives you a velocity. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so let's do it the way it's written. It's important to remember that the velocities and the forces don't have to make sense with each other in any way because those are talking about different instants. Um, but let's just imagine that the five kilogram box is moving to the right in a way that doesn't let that cable fold. Okay. All right, so now free body diagram of five kilogram box. It has its weight acting, so that's 49.05. And it has a normal force, I'll call it N2, with the ground. And then a friction force with the ground, what direction is that going to point? Okay, so that's 0.3 times N2. And now what about the contact? Well, we know there's this 50 Newton force. What about the contact with the box sitting on top of it? Well, there's a couple ways to think about that. Um, but one of them is, notice that these two together make up a force vector on the 2-kilogram box by the 5-kilogram box, okay? And so each of these two components, we can switch the direction and keep the same variable, okay? These are... Each one of these is a force with a known direction associated with a scalar variable. So we know that acting on the 5 is the normal force N1 pointing down, and the friction force 0.2 N1 pointing to the left. This is, this combines to be the force on 5 by 2. So think of um, that normal force N1 is a force vector with a known direction. If we switch the subscripts on that one, we end up with N1 acting in the other direction. And this point 0.2N1 has a known direction. If we switch the subscripts, that gives us the same magnitude force acting in the opposite direction. And then there's one more force, the cable tension T. Um, and now when we write out Newton's second law for both of these, what we should see is that, so add these two up together. Um, I mean, you can write this in component form. F25 is equal to 0.2 N1 N1, right? F52, the way I have it drawn, is equal to negative 0.2 N1 negative N1. 
and F25 and F52 have to be equal and opposite to each other. So the X component is equal and opposite, the Y component is equal and opposite, so we know we have that right. Those are the two ways you can think about that. Any questions about that? Um, all right, so now we want to solve for the acceleration. Um, that means we're going to use these free body diagrams to write out Newton's second law. Uh, before we do that, how would these free body diagrams look different if this was a static problem? What? You'd have static coefficient of friction, I suppose, or, um, but um, basically these would look just the same, okay? Um, everything that we did in statics is the same way to approach it with things moving. The only thing that's going to change is the acceleration vector on the right side of Newton's second law, okay? So in a way, you can think of it as like what statics did was give us a lot of practice in setting up the left side of Newton's second law. Now we're going to worry about what to do with the right side more this semester. All right, so Newton's second law for the two kilogram box says T0 plus 0, negative 19.62 plus 0.2 n1 n1 is equal to the mass times the acceleration. What do we know about the acceleration of block 2? Well, uh, we don't know anything about the acceleration numerically. Uh, we don't know anything about, let's assume that we don't know for sure um, because there's friction there. So we don't know if the friction is going to win out over that 50 Newton force, but we do know it's going to move either left or right, okay? We know it's not going to like jump off of the five kilogram box or sink into it, right? And so um, we're going to treat the acceleration vector as some unknown A in the X component and zero in the Y component, okay? If it comes out negative, that's fine. If it comes out positive, that's fine. So we're not assuming left or right, but we are assuming that it only has an X component. So I'll call this A2, zero. And then for the five kilogram box, we have negative 50, zero. plus 0, negative 49.05, plus T0, plus uh, the contact with the ground is negative 0.3 N2, N2, and the contact with the two kilogram box is negative 0.2 and one and one. And all these added up have to be equal to five times, what do we know about the acceleration of the five kilogram box? Only X and Y, so I'll write this as A5, zero. Okay, so we have four equations. Yes, thanks. Okay, we have four equations. How many unknowns do we have? T, N1, A2, 
n2 and a5. So right now we have four equations, five unknowns. So we need one more constraint equation, one more equation that contains information about these variables. Yep. Okay, so that's the one that we're looking for. So now um, recognize that as these move, as long as that, as long as that cable doesn't fold, whatever the acceleration is of this one in one direction, the acceleration of this one in the other direction is the same. Okay? So that's required if that cable stays the same length. So if the cable's inextensible, then we know that a5 has to be equal to negative a2. So now we have this system of four equations. Um, it says t plus 0.2n1 is equal to 2a2. The second equation says negative 19.62 plus n1 is equal to 0. The third one says negative 50 plus t. Minus 0.3n2, minus 0.2n1. Is equal to 5a5. The fourth equation says negative 49.05 plus n2 minus n1 is equal to 0. And the fifth one says a5 is equal to negative a2. Um, so to solve this on a calculator, you know, it's a system of five uh, equations for five unknowns. Um, write an augmented matrix. Um, we need six columns and five rows. Um, and the order I'm going to do is T, N1, N2, A2, A5, and then the constants. And remember, to write this augmented matrix, you have to get the constants on the right side of the equation. So um, the first one is t plus 0.2n1 minus 2a2 is equal to 0. The second one says n1 is equal to positive 19.62. 
The third one says t minus 0.2 n1 minus 0.3 n2 minus 5 a5 is equal to 50. The fourth equation says minus n1 plus n2 is equal to positive 49.05. And the fifth equation says a2 plus a5 is equal to 0. And so now fill out this matrix. Um, the first row is 1. Uh, point two, zero, negative two, zero, and zero for a constant. The second equation is zero, one, zero, 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 positive nineteen point six two. The third one says one, negative point two negative 0.3, 0, negative 5, 50. The fourth one says 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 49.05. And the last one says 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And now um, use the reduced row echelon form command. Um, I think any graphing calculator has that. And you'll get out of it um, t equal to 18.49 n1 is equal to 19.62 and 2 is equal to 68.67 a2 is equal to 11.207 meters per second squared and a5 is equal to negative 11.207 and so now, to figure out the acceleration vector of block 2, you can just take that value for A2 and plug it back into... So this vector, now that we know the value of A2, gives us the acceleration vector. So um, the acceleration vector of the 2 kilogram block is 11.207... Zero. Okay, so does um, does friction win or does that fifty newton force win as far as the accelerations go? Uh, so that's right. Yep, by a lot. Um, so the acceleration friction is trying to keep. Friction is trying to friction is trying to make this block accelerate this way, and the fifty newton force is trying to make it accelerate this way, and that's what you get. Any questions about that problem? Okay, so really that was just supposed to be a look at, you know, if you're sort of just systematic about, um, about looking at what forces you have, just apply the weight force, then go around the boundary and look for places where there's contact. You can make these sort of ugly looking problems just sort of follow the system, you know. Okay.